and let's get right into today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing another true crime case and this would have been a where is video because this person was missing for 27 years. Today I'm gonna be telling you the story of a beautiful little boy and it breaks my heart. This is Jacob Wetterling. He looked like such a sweetheart. Doesn't he just look like the sweetest kid? I'm sure his teachers loved him, family loved him. He was born on February 17th of 1978 and he sadly went missing on October 22nd of 1989. Today, October 12th, I'm five feet tall. My whole name is Jacob Irvin Wetterling. My favorite food is steak. My favorite color is blue. My best friend is Aaron Larson. My favorite, I don't really have a favorite song. My favorite game is Clue. My favorite thing to do most is watch football. What I want to be when I grow up is a football player. My favorite hobby is collecting football cards. I don't have a favorite book and my newest friend is Gabe. I'm finished. He was from St. Joseph, Minnesota. These are his parents, Jerry Wetterling and Patty Wetterling. And they also had four other kids, Amy, Jacob, Trevor, and Carmen. So let's go through that day and what happened. It was a pretty normal morning. Um, Jacob actually went with his father, Jerry, to go fishing. They had a great time together fishing and you know, that's always like such great bonding time because it's a lot of sitting and waiting for a fish to arrive. So they had a really nice time fishing and they went back to their house to catch the beginning of the Vikings game. The Vikings game started at noon and after the game ended Jerry had the boys go outside with him and toss the football around so that was Trevor and Jacob hanging out with their dad just you know having a really normal quality family day Patty and Jerry actually had plans that night to go to a dinner party so they left the house around 5 30 ish they were going to dinner at a friend's house who was about 20 25 minutes away from where they live they weren't gonna be gone very long it wasn't gonna be a late night and they decided to let the kids stay home alone but the oldest daughter Amy actually wasn't there that night Jacob's parents told him that he could have a friend come hang out that night. We called his best friend Aaron and Aaron came right over because the boys actually didn't have school the next day so they could, you know, have a fun night together. When they got to the dinner party that they were going to, they actually called the house and gave the kids the phone number of the house that they were at. So that way they would be able to get, you know, a hold of them if anything happened. So during the middle of the dinner party, Patty and Jerry received a call from Trevor asking if the boys could ride their bikes down to the video rental store. When I was that age, um, there actually was still rental stores back then. I don't really think they exist much of anywhere these days. Me and my friends used to walk down to our video store all the time. That was like kind of our thing to do on Saturday or Friday nights, especially when my parents were gone. So it's like pretty normal. And you know, that was in the 2000s that I was doing that. But Patty being a very cautious mother said no. She didn't want them to leave the house on their own. So they needed to find something to do at home. And they lived in an area that was, you know, mainly fields and stuff. So it is a little dangerous and it's getting darker. So it's not like they're just like on suburban streets. They're, you know, in the middle of the country. But Trevor said, let me talk to dad. And I'm sure we've all pulled that move where we tell you know one parent let me let me see if the other parent will let me do this he actually decided to overrule patty's decision and told them that they could ride to the movie store he said as long as they brought big flashlights so they could be seen by oncoming traffic that they were good to go but only 45 minutes after getting off the phone with them another call came in and it was one of their neighbors saying that they needed to come home the neighbor said it had something to do with Jacob and him being missing, so he ran to his wife, Patty, and told her, Jacob's missing, we need to go now. This neighbor then called the police and told them that Jacob was taken when he and his brother were coming back from the video store. According to Trevor and Aaron, who were completely petrified from this, the three of them were riding home and they were stopped on their bikes. And then a man approached them who was wearing a black mask and holding a gun. I mean, I remember it like it happened yesterday. Initially, when we were going down to Tom Thumb, there's a little field to the left-hand side of the road. I remember hearing a little rustle, you know, it's kind of tall grass. A kind of shiver went through me, you know, just the wind or an animal. 
but just something didn't feel right. And so dark out that you couldn't see anything. And I just remember the first thing I saw was kind of the flash of the gun. I mean, it was like a silver kind of flash. Figured it was just some high school kid or something just kind of pulling a joke on us. And he told us he had a gun. You know, and then we had to turn off our flashlights. So obviously this is like every kid's worst nightmare. I'm sure they were absolutely terrified. The guy told them to get off of their bikes and lay on the ground. Got told to basically lay down in the ditch with our faces down. He asked for all of their ages, looked at them all. He first decided he didn't want Trevor, so he sent him running off into the woods and said if he looked back, he would shoot him. Then he looked at both Jacob and Aaron, decided he wanted Jacob, and sent Aaron running after Trevor into the woods and said, if you look back or try to help your friend, I will shoot you. I ran as fast as I could to catch up with Trevor. And then, you know, we went maybe 100 yards. And he looked back, you know, and there's nobody there at that point. Looking back, you know, me and Jacob are the same age. We both look alike. And it's pitch black, and you probably couldn't really see our faces. I always had to live with that, you know, I was the last person, you know, with him. That's 50-50 odds as far as, you know, me or him. And, you know, why did he choose him and not me? Aaron said that when he finally caught up with Trevor, who was running ahead of him, they finally decided to stop when they thought they were far enough away and look back, but they couldn't see anything. I mean, I remember sitting in their house that night in their living room. They have a big picture window, and you could see everybody pull up. And, you know, all through the whole night, I just remember thinking, you know, sooner or later he's going to come up and he's going to get out of the car and this will all be over.